everyone. It's Saturday. It's almost five. <clears throat> I've been having a lot of fun today. You know, I've been working on things and projects and stuff on my list. And I thought, I'm going to do some other things. And I had to do a design team video for something. So I decided to uh, make my August daily, which I really like. This is from Beth Solar's Rock rock in your notebook um, shop. I'll put that link down below. If I remember, I'll try. I promise I'll try. Um, so I, this was her cover on this. It's a Tomoe River. And I put these stamps on and then I wrote the volume. And this will come out on Monday. But um, I, I prepared all the pages with watercoloring. I did the watercolor a few months ago. So um, it's just kind of a rainbow watercolor. But today I sewed in all the dates and stamped um, one stamp for every date. So since I'm showing that later, I'm not going to show it now. But I want to do this. It's kind of like about covers. Um, so that's a cover I did. Then I did um, not this yet. I decided, you know, I've been making, I made giveaway junk journals with uh, scrap paper laminated, about an A5, A, is it A5? Whatever is like a piece of paper folded in half size. Maybe that's A7. I don't know. <laughs> it's probably A7. Well, I decided to make up a bunch of covers because I want to have them ready for when I want to make, I like assembly line, okay? That's my thing. I like things to kind of go in assembly line, so that's kind of what I, I did here. But um, I wanted the covers ready because some cup people, oh, there's a bunch of people I, I really want to make some journals for, like I did that house mouse one, and um, I did the two giveaway nature ones. So I thought that I did like a whole slew of covers. But I thought these particular ones would be perfect for Daphne's diary type journals. Like now I got the birds on the wrong way here. So this will be, I'm going to make one for myself because I love Daphne's diary. And I've got this in mind for a friend and this in mind for another friend and so on and so forth. And I've got several friends that I will eventually make things for, but I'm just going to show you the different covers. Um, some of them have inside stuff, some don't. This has a, a little bit of a pattern inside, but it's very um, faint. This is brown. This has a little bit of a pattern. This doesn't have a pattern, but I really like, I think it's pretty. I did two. I went the stripes up and the stripes down. And this one is beautiful. And this is the same one, but a different cut. And this. And these roses, which, yeah, I think they can go either way. I think I like them this way. And this goes, that's upside down, so it goes this way. Isn't it gorgeous? This one, the butterflies. This one, I didn't. The butterflies are on the wrong side and there was nothing I could do about that so the glittery butterflies are on the back <laughs> this one this one I like this one too oh this one has like a wood grain in it and this one has some kind of cool pattern paper as well Okay, let me put that back in. There's that. Here's a couple fall ones. They're the same on the back. This dark one that I just showed you is just dark on the back. And these are white on the inside. There's another pretty fall. This one is what I used for my vintage uh, heritage cookbook. So this could be a cookbook um, themed one. I'm not sure. This is the front. That's just kind of a glittery gold, and that's another glittery. These are kind of from a kind of a vintage scrapbook paper. So I thought they were kind of cool, you know. And this one, it's like chicken wire, and that is also from a vintage. 
another one. This is like a glass, a vintage uh, cut glass. And this <clears throat> is just a green. So those, I have a ton and all ready to go and I'm excited about doing those journals. And then I've got my two picked out for my next ones for my shop. This was a beautiful green one called Rock Gardening. And I'm going to do the stitching all the way through on this one and then cover up the spine with some lace. But I'm leaving that because isn't that just gorgeous? The cover is so perfect. Then, um, and I don't even really need to put anything in here because this is really very nice paper as well. Just, you know, here for when, yeah, just a little something, maybe lace. And then I'm going to do the smaller one because I have two sizes here. So this one is about eight and a half by five and a half and a one and a quarter spine. This one is seven and a half by five, and this has a really small spine that's just an inch. So this will definitely be a smaller one. And my prices just vary according to the size. I am gonna try not to stuff them so full that they're just like bursting. I'm gonna be a little more careful about that, I think. That's what I say. <laughs> we'll see if that's the truth. And then this one, um, I love it. It's already very vintagey looking. I think this will be more of a vintagey looking uh, natural, like my last one that was more of a natural look. I think that's what that will be. And then this one will be more like my other ones that I made. So I'm excited about starting those. So those are on my mind. And then I went on the Rebookery channel and <clears throat> she did an altered book tutorial and as a plan using it as a planner so I thought you know what I'm gonna do a planner for next year for 2019 and um, I'm gonna do what she said so I have I found this book at a thrift store it's in German so I can't read it and it um, it was a 1955 book so it was the right type of book because she said when you bend it this should be free and you should be no staples and it should be strings and she showed exactly the type of book and how to take out the pages and you take out a third of the pages so what you do is you go to the middle of each signature and you take out however many number is a third out of that out of those pages so i ended up with um of this size like this type of spread I ended I glued together them because these were thin papers so I glued two together sometimes three and I ended up with 60 sheet spreads like this so 12 of them are for the month each month of the year and then there's going to be four spreads like this for the weeks just writing like appointments and stuff I'm not going to do it in a week format I'm just going to Okay, this day I've got this, this day I've got that. And I went ahead and used gesso for the month pages. So the months, the actual month pages have gesso on them. And I'm going to use acrylic paint um, for the other pages. So I'm kind of going through and I'm doing my gesso. And I'm just doing it lightly. I don't care that that bit of writing shows through. So one, two, three, four. I'm going to have to go back and do some gluing too. As you can see, I'm having a little glue uh, issues um, at times. So I will go back and do like fix my gluing when I need to. Or I can put washi, right? Now I lost count. <laughs> One. One, two, three, four. This page gets... And this is all I do. I just take the, this one's a Faber-Castell, and then I've got a Dana Wakely. And um, I haven't used my gesso in a long time. When I first started, I just use a sponge, when I because it's the smoothest. I try to brush on the first page, and it's like, ugh, didn't like it. But um, when I first started Bible journaling, they suggested uh, the person I was following the tutorials on, 
said to put gesso on your Bible pages. So I did. But eventually I just got away from it and just didn't do it because it was just a step I didn't want to do. And it didn't concern me if something shadowed or bled through a little bit to the other side. That wasn't such a big deal for me. Um, and I did do it a little bit when I first started art journaling too. I'd used the gesso, but then I just like, nah, I got away from that too. <laughs> so all I do is just uh, put it on and you're gonna, sh I, I don't care that I have stuff showing through and I just hit it with a heat gun like that until it dries. This is my heat gun that cost me like $1.25 at a thrift store and it works perfectly let it dry do the four more and then I think let's see because I've got kind of light colors on the outside oh I didn't even show what I did I put a piece of fabric first I the cover was totally uh, starting to crumble and fall apart to the spine so I covered it with packing tape and then I glued on this fabric and then I glued on this scrap of paper and then I have a piece here and I stamped that that was a Tim Holtz stamp I believe and I stamped there as well so I like how that looks back up here so I think I'm gonna pick some light colors for inside because I can just write on them so I'm gonna pick some pretty colors let me see what I can find I was thinking I had a pink, but my pinks look, my pink looks a little dark. I think, I think I'm going to have to go like a vanilla um, on one of the pages. I don't really want to. So I could do green, this color, this color, and that color. And then I really did want pink, but... I'm over here looking at the colors, or yellow, but the yellow is so bright. Um, the pink, pink is pure pink, it's not bright, so this pink might, that pink might be okay. And I'm just going to clean off my sponge, and I'm just going to sponge, so maybe these colors will be my, I don't know yet about that one. I kind of like yellow too, but I could mix this with some orange to get the color I want. That's another possibility, because I don't think I want pink. <laughs> I, think, I think I want orange. So maybe if I mix these two, I can lighten up my orange just a little bit. So those are just acrylic paints and I'm just going to um, smear those on. Maybe I can dry this really quick. My plan is to um, draw the month, like do the lines and draw the month more or less uh, correctly. Now the the get Ray Bookery, she just does hers. Um, she doesn't care about measuring and all that, and she doesn't cover up this, and that's perfectly fine. I think you just do what you feel comfortable with. What I did like is she took it everywhere with her, and even like when she was watching TV she would just sit and doodle and I love that idea too. I think that's a fantastic idea and painting in it. Um, I think you can paint. So if we go back to my first one and this is rough, but oh well. So this is what I was thinking. I'm not going to worry about the fact that I have gesso. I just want to, I just want to kind of do this online for you. Let's just go like this. Okay, and then you just put your paint. Acrylic is great because you can write over acrylic, which is fantastic, and I, I like that you can. And I'm just going to do it like this, and that'll give me enough of a surface um, for writing on. 
that I don't think I need to worry um, about that. And it'll kind of help anything that may want to smear to the other side won't smear so much. Now I'm still doing my dailies like I always do in the Traveler's Notebook inserts or junk journals or you know whatever I happen to be where book I make. I'm still doing that because that's that's memory keeping and this is going to be a planner for me. So this is totally different. So let's see what that does to my pages. It's just, excuse the noise, I'm really sorry about this. But I wanna see how it dries and I wanna show you how it dries. thing will be to make sure that these pages don't stick together um, and I wanted to heat dry it because I think that's probably better um, than just letting it dry because I think it would wrinkle more if I just let it dry so that's what I'm gonna do that's kind of a I know that's a different project but you know some days I, you just feel like you got to do something different and I just felt like I wanted to do something different you know not the same old thing that I always do so that's that's why I'm doing this anyway thanks for watching um it was just a little different type of video and I just thought you know you might enjoy seeing the little things I'm working on before I delve back into making next month's nature journal so thank you for watching bye